In this lesson, I'll teach the basics of double thumbing and drop thumbing. I'll be in double C tuning. Let's start with double thumbing. All right, so do you remember in the beginning when you started playing claw hammer, I had you go through a bunch of right hand exercises. Um, well, let's look back to your index thumb exercise. Remember it was hitting your first string with your finger while your thumb lands on the fifth string and then rolls off. So it was first thumb, first thumb, first thumb, first thumb, or second string, fifth string, or third string, fifth string, or fourth string. That thumb always stayed locked in, landing on that fifth string. And your spatial awareness for this finger was based off your thumb always landing on that fifth string and you were learning the spaces from string to string based on the width from your thumb and finger. Well, we're going to reverse that for double thumbing. Instead of your thumb always landing on that fifth string, now your thumb is going to land on the second string and your finger is going to land on the first string to begin with. So put your finger on the first string and thumb on the second. Your hand goes up like it's gonna knock on a door and you go back down landing on that first string while thumb lands on that second string and you roll through the first string and then your thumb rolls through the second. So again, these two fingers, the finger and thumb land together, they work as a unit, and then you roll through. Now you can switch it up, you could go to first string uh, with your finger and thumb on your third string, or finger on the first string and thumb on the fourth string. And then you could go finger on the first string and thumb on the fifth string, which seems familiar, right? So you could practice each of those exercises. So before when you were practicing your index thumb exercise, you were basing everything off of your fifth string. You were basing your first string space from your fifth string, your second, or your third, or your fourth. And you could think of it as a wrench with four settings. You have this space, uh, the second and fifth space, the third and fifth space, and the fourth and fifth space. Well, again, it is opposite with double thumbing. You're basing everything off the first string. So it's the first string and second string, first string, third string, first string, fourth string, first string, fifth string. So you have these different settings and spaces you need to get used to. So it's a whole bunch of practice to get used to that spatial awareness. For those of you who are just starting off learning claw hammer banjo, the double thumbing technique will not be immediately useful. Not like the next technique I'm going to show you but it is very useful for playing melodic banjo down the line. Stuff like... That was all double thumbing. Let's move on from double thumbing to drop thumbing. Drop thumbing is just the combination of double thumbing with index thumbing. So let's start off with double thumbing. You'll hit your first string while your thumb lands on the second and then rolls off. And then we'll index thumb. You'll hit your first string while your thumb lands on the fifth string. And that's the basics. You want to repeat that over and over and over. So it'll be one, two, one, five. First string, second string, first string, fifth string. One, two, three, four. You want everything to be even. It's four beats. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So when you're starting off doing this drop thumb exercise, you're gonna hit the first string and your thumb is going to be based off of the space from your first string. It could be uh, first string, second string, or it could be first string, third string, followed by a index thumb, or it could be first string, fourth string, followed by index thumb. So you can change that space and you're basing everything off that first string, kind of like the first exercise we were doing. So, the first exercise I want you to practice is one, two, one, five. So you'll do that over and over and over, and once you have that, move on to hitting your first string while thumb lands on the third string, and then hit your first string while thumb lands on the fifth. And then 
you'll move on to hitting your first string while thumb lands on the fourth string. And then first, fifth. So you have your first set of exercises. You're changing that second beat of this four beat pattern. One, two, three, four, and you go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So let's try changing the third beat of this pattern now. So instead of changing the double thumbing part, we'll change the index thumb part of this pattern. So let's start off with this. We'll go one, two, one, five. Practice that over and over. Then you can practice one, two, two, five, one, two, two, five, one, two, two, five. And then you could practice one, two, three, five, one, two, three, five, one, two, three, five. And then you could practice one, two, four, five, one, two, four, five, one, two, four, five. As you can imagine, there's a ton of permutations. As you can imagine, as you could imagine, there's a ton of permutations that could exist with the combination of double thumbing and index thumbing to make the larger style of drop thumb. Uh, if you want to dig deeper into this, I have a series on just drop thumbing permutations that you can make your way over to dig deep. But for now, just practice the basics. Let's talk about how to add rhythm to your drop thumbing. Remember, Drop thumbing is the combination of double thumbing and index thumbing. If we want, we can substitute the index thumb for a brush thumb. So instead of, we'll have a double thumb, brush thumb. Just because you're drop thumbing does not mean you have to lose your rhythm and groove. If you go, one, two, brush, thumb, you can keep that rhythm in with the melody. So practice going one, two, strum, top, and then you could practice going one, three, strum, top, one, three, strum, top, or one, four, strum, top, one, four, strum, top. Let's talk about some practical ways to add drop thumb to your playing right now. Anytime there's a melody note on the first string going up or down the neck for a solid bum ditty, there's an opportunity. Instead of going bum ditty, you can go one, two, one, top, or one, two, strum, top, and you're still going to catch that melody note, but you're going to get the texture of drop thumb, and it's going to sound really interesting. So a great tune for this might be Mississippi Sawyer. I teach that tune with this technique in uh, the video series. So you could go learn it. Uh, it goes like this. Bum diddy 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 bum diddy. But if I had drop thumb, my hand's gonna keep doing this pattern, and I let my left hand play the melody. It sounds like this. can do the bum ditty with the rhythm and it sounds like this. Or you could add in harmony notes to add that drop thumb, a little more texture to that drop thumb. There are a ton of other drop thumb permutations that would work on this tune. So instead of going one, two, one top the whole way through, I could go one, two, two top, one, two, two top through the whole thing. Sounds kind of neat. Maybe not through the whole thing, but you could throw it in once in a while for a and then change your permutations so you're not doing the same thing over and over or maybe it'd be one two three top 
instead of one, two, two tops. So one, two, three tops. So it'd sound like this. That sounds good. And you could do the next permutation on the next one. Or if you're harmonizing, it might sound different. You kind of have to experiment and see what you like and don't like. Uh, sometimes I like to go one, two, four tops. So we're kind of going through these permutations on this tune. Like a drone note, it's kind of neat. You don't always have to be on the first string for a solid bum ditty to fit drop thumb into your playing. So instead of going one, two, three, four, for just one note, you can split up that four note pattern. You could go one, two on the first string, second fret, and then hit your one, five on the first string, third fret. So it would be, right? Uh, then you could go to the first string, fifth fret, and go one, two, and then go to the first string, seventh fret for one, five. So it's, See how I can split up the four note pattern? So you could add in the brush thumb and do the same thing. It'd be one, two, then brush thumb on the first string, third fret, and then one, two on the first string, fifth fret, and brush thumb on the first string, seventh fret. So you'd have, or you could do this going down. It could be, So there's lots of ways to add in the bum ditty. You don't always have to have the melody on the first string to fit in drop thumb. The melody could be on the second, third, or fourth string, anything goes. So here's two examples of adding drop thumb in on other strings. Let's take Boil 'em Cabbage Down, a tune I taught in the beginner series. So the melody is second, second, second string still, second, second, third string, second string, second string, second string, second string, second, third, third. So you don't always have to hit the melody on the first string. It could be the thumb catching the melody note, and it might sound a little delayed, but it still sounds good. So check this out. One, two, one, top. I'll do that exercise. Uh, and I'm going to be catching the melody on that second string with my thumb. So Sounds pretty good So one two one top one two one top make the C chord one two one top one two one top one two one top open and then for this D chord, it's going to be the melody note, it's going to be on the third string. So it's one, three, one, top, one, three, one, top. Then back to the second, one, two, one, top, one, two, one, top. You could add in the brush thumb in there, so it'd be. You could also catch the melody with your thumb on the tune Groundhog, a tune I teach in the beginner series. So the first phrase was three, four, three, four. Those are the strings I'm hitting. So you'd start off by hitting the first string while your thumb lands on third. Then hit your first string while thumb lands on the fourth string, third fret, first top. Then hit your first string open while thumb lands on the third string open, followed by first top. Then hit your first string while thumb lands on the fourth string open, first top. Sounds like this. Or add in that rhythm, that brush drum. Another way to catch melody notes on the inside strings, the second, third, and fourth, would be just to start off by hitting the string you want to hit. 
Uh, let's say the melody notes on the second string. You can hit the second string while thumb lands on the third string, then hit the second string again while thumb lands on the fifth string. So two, three, two, five, two, three, two, five, or you could go two, three, one, five. That's kind of a neat sound. Um, an example, boiling cabbage down. The melody starts on the second string, right? And the moon's to the third string. So it would sound like this with this pattern. Two, three, one, five. If we did that pattern over that melody, it'd sound like this. Or you could add the brush thumb in there. So it'd be two, three, strung top, and it would sound like this. So this is my suggestion on how to learn and practice drop thumb. In this lesson series, I've taught a ton of tunes that have drop thumb in them. And a lot of them are easy tunes with easy ways that are practical to add in drop thumb. So I'll list my top 10 favorite tunes with drop thumb in them, and you should start there. If you find yourself having a hard time with a certain phrase, I want you to isolate that phrase and practice it as a four or eight note pattern. Let's say it was a four note pattern, it was this. Well, I want you to take the left hand out of the equation. Just work on the right hand. If it was, that was one, two, one, two on your right hand. Just practice it without the left hand. And then think about your left hand and what it's doing and then try and combine them. So you'd be going, Maybe it was, that's an eight note pattern. So again, take out the left hand, maybe look at the tab and it goes one, two, one, two, two, three, two, three. And then add in that left hand. Maybe it's this eight note pattern. Take out the left hand from the equation. So it'd be, Isolate it and repeat it over and over. Until you're comfortable with it. If you really want to hone in your drop thumb playing, you could go over to my drop thumb exercises and permutations lesson and go through the exercises until you find a hard one and then practice it until it's your strength. Then go on to the next exercise and keep going through them. Maybe pick a few a week. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson and you keep at it. Thanks.